Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ava Novus live stream. This is Dan today, and over here, you can't see him, we have Ethan, and then we have the Dyspraxa Penguin, and we are all hard at work. I thought I would, this is a first for us, so it might suck, but it might not. So bear, bear with me on this. We're actually gonna be painting our 3D printed maps. We just got these from our 3D printer guy named Andrew, he's in my printer. And here's what it comes out looking like. Let's try to get a good shot. This one's more of a stylistic, like if you're ma making someone something in Art Rage, or excuse me, Art Rage, or uh, Wonder Draft, or Incarnate. You can't really see it because it's pink. No, let's see. Yeah, that's the correct orientation. This one is a little bit different. This is actually a realistic height map from an art rage picture and this is what we're going to be playing today as you can see with the light there you can see just the depth and scope so this is just a tutorial i i figured i'm going to do this anyways might as well stream with this uh if you're new to the stream welcome if i miss your comment i am very sorry and please forgive me and we will get started here ian take care of one second please And we shall get going. Okay, first thing we're gonna do here, folks, is we're going to put our undercoats. And I use actually a combination of paints. I use the uh, Privateer with the P3s. And then I also use, I'm a really big fan of the Citadel stuff, just for bases and other things like that. So let's give that a good shake. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna add our base coats to everything. Again, if you have questions or anything about the map or how I paint stuff, please let me know. I'm just prepping my brushes. We're going to use a flathead brush for this. There we go. All right. And again, we're going to do the water first and then land. Um, again, let's go ahead and get this started. And the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to go with a little. Uh, let's go with Cantor Blue for the for the water. Shake that, shake that, shake that up a little more. If you're just joining us, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Mixer, we're on Twitch, we're pretty much on everything. So we are going to go ahead and primer brush. That's my soap. That is my soap. We do not. Want I use soapy water with some of the synthetic brushes, just because it helps get the color. I'll prime my brush. Try to get it kind of a wet canvas. I usually like using just a just a plate. I mean, just a bowl. That way, I'm not spending too much money on fancy dancy canvases. And again, we're going to be doing two thin coats the base. The base is really critical. This blue, I'm kind of going dark. We'll, we'll start highlighting it once we get to the other portion. Now we got that. Let's go ahead and get started. Again, I'm going to focus on the water. To do that, I'm going to put, just slap this on and pull it away from the land. It is a little too wet. And when you're painting with 3D, uh, 3D models, you kind of have to put it on pretty thick. We're going to coat the coat. There we go. Come out there. And this is also going to bring out all your errors and mistakes or problems with the 3D printer. And that's another reason we're going to do a bunch of coats for this. Let them dry and go in. These were, I believe, printed on a Wanhao i3. It's my uh, weapon of choice when it comes to 3D printers. We also have a couple of uh, resin printers that we we're, we might get a review if people are interested. If you're interested in some reviews or see how they work or a pricing guide, uh, we use 3D printers. Uh, 
Andrew used it for industrial work. I use it for little models and stuff like this. And again, all I'm doing is I'm going in and just throw some paint down. It has a base. And again, this first base is just a, this is just going to be our coat. And we'll just add some more. I'm really not caring about overlap right now with the water. spread stuff I do have a fan on right now so if the sound if you get that sound I'm very sorry you know thinking of it let's get some music to kind of override that a little bit not that one I already heard that one okay, let's just check levels just something real subtle to kind of drown out that fan's white noise let me know on volume. Fans really doing a good job. When it comes to painting large flat areas on these maps, the best thing you can do is uh, pull away from the land as such. And to blend, of course, once this gets drier, we're just going to do like X's like that. If you can see that. So we're going to let that dry, and now we're going to go into our. And again, soapy water. The key with soapy water is cleaning it off. Can I get some more paper towels, please? Thank you. Ian, today is working on our role-playing maps. And I'm really excited and happy he's here. Uh, we're now gonna do a, oh, thank you. A, the fan's not picking up? Yep. Okay, sweet, very cool. I turn down the music then. Appreciate that, Ian. I'll turn that down, because we have a number of watchers that don't like the music. All right, we're back into this. I do use soapy water to clean uh, synthetic brushes. And then once I'm done cleaning it, I will rinse off with a rinse cup. I actually have three cups here. There we go. Okay, again, more frame more brown. Let's have a look. Get some shadows on this. We're getting there. We are getting there. And again, I'm not being too careful. This is just spreading paint. All right, how are we doing? Yep. All right. So the brown for the landmass is we're going to start in the middle of the landmass where the mountains are, and we're going to go to kind of a little green, and then just work on refining. Again, oh, this isn't as mixed as I thought it was. Prime your brush. A touch of water. Yeah, let's get started there. And now we are up right over there. We're just gonna this this brush is a little wet. This will be our first coat. But with the 3D printing, these all these little lines and stuff and all these little small places, it's really gonna suck up a lot of this. Color. Welcome to the channel. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, this was an impromptu stream. If you're on Twitch, go ahead and say hi. Mixer, go ahead and say hi. I will try to look up every now and again too. See what people are doing. And again, this is going to look a lot better right now. It looks like doggy do. <laughs> Dookie. That's okay. I'm just spreading a base coat around to get rid of that primer. Flat parts go thick. These other parts, like any other model, thin coats.
Once we have this, we'll start with the greens. Nice. Oh, there. You can kind of see right there that it's really cleaning up. This is going to be about a two to three hour process to get this done. A little bit of trial and error. I painted some 3D printing maps before. We are going to show you how to do this on the channel and some resources to help you get this done. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape. This will be probably, we're going to paint this as a temperate, temperate zone. Once we get these bases down, we'll go ahead and get back there and clean up with the, with the second, with a lot of washes of the blue on this because we also have to make it I'm going to increase my coat. And we don't want to put too much on it because we're going to go in with the shade. We're also going to go in with some highlight brushes. So this now I'm going to be a little bit more careful with what I'm doing here. Just for the sake of I don't want that much dark. The brown's a really dark color and I don't want that to have to touch that up as much. Let's go ahead and so you can actually see what I'm doing. Nice thing about a 3D map, it's when it comes to players, to be able to just, you know, whip out a map and show them and have all the terrain there that they can see exactly where they're going and stuff like that is fun. Something else you can do that I find really fun is if you print these out pretty big, uh, you can actually have real-time battles. That's also something we're, we're kind of planning on doing. You kind of need something bigger to do that, like a mill machine. Luckily, we have access to a pretty substantial mill machine. Probably print that out on foam or something. Hey, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're on Facebook right now, please be aware that it only broadcasts at uh, 720p. And the camera that I'm using is... Well, it's a piece. <laughs> it gets the job done, but not too well. Let me get back into that. See that right there? Let's see see it. I got some blue right there and it's now kind of hard to cover up. Just the nature of things. I'm going to start not watering this down too much. And again, because we're working with the striations from a 3D printer, it's it takes a lot of paint off the brush. And you gotta be really careful so it doesn't uh, clog your uh, clog the areas and create these little reservoirs of paint. Because if that happens, it's like surprise. And again, a little. What I'm doing right now is just a little uh, up and down action. Let's see who else is here. Hey, is everyone watching on Facebook? Welcome. Don't know if the Facebook app is working right now. Let me go check. Facebook is kind of naughty sometimes, so that, that does happen every now and again. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Whoops. Yeah, you know, it's live now. Don't know if the Facebook app is... Nope, oh, sorry about that. All right, now I can see everything, all the chats and stuff like that. Yay! Again, we're trying to reuse as much color as we can. Since we're putting on layer after layer after layer, it doesn't really... That's a little too much. That was a little too wet, so I'm just going to dab that much off. 
I'm just going into it. I'm just going to set it and hit the pause. This is a piece of our main campaign setting for the roleplay game we're working on that. We're actually going to start opening a closed beta. Some narrow, yeah, some game masters we know. Then after about a month or two months of that, we're going to open up a open beta. I have to readjust the stuff from the closed beta. Okay, we're doing good there. Let's go ahead and we're going to rinse this brush out and we're going to move to a different brush. Again, a little soapy water. You get that. That just almost instantly. It's kind of hard to see since this is brown, but I guarantee you there's nothing on there. Just don't leave your brushes in the soapy water. That's bad. All right, let's go ahead and move into a smaller brush. We're now going to start putting on the Put it on the blue again. Right now, this brush is. Well, let's see if I can. Yeah, that's all too much. So, I'm going to prep this, slap it in water, roll it. So we kind of got a fine edge on that. Now, this, I will be watering this down, but just with the brush and only with the brush. And again, we're hitting the. It's a little too much. There we go. So we're just gonna go straight in the pot. We are going to be very careful getting just the edges of the water. Again, same thing. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the chat. Got a lot of people on Facebook. Really appreciate it. We have a little higher resolution stream on YouTube if you want to check that out. This is kind of hard to see because, well, first of all, it's my first time actually doing a painting tutorial. And again, I am using uh, Citadel paints. Basically, if you like, play Warhammer models. This is what I'm using. Again, I'm controlling the amount of paint. It has to be thick. There we go. Because we were we are working on a 3D printed surface and everything has a lot of little textures. So all those little textures actually pull paint onto it. So it kind of it helps smoothing down the lines you get from 3D painting. From painting 3D objects. But paint's expensive, so you don't want to go that nuts with it. Uh, temper paints you can get like at a hobby shop were great. The reason I'm using these is I like them. And also that they are, I, I can get the exact color without having to mix anything else. There are some paint brands. No, we're just going to make a brush in that. Come back to it. There are some war paints that are really, 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 really nice. You guys can you can see and again I'm starting right by the coast because we have a little bit of a we made the first couple layers of the actual um, actual map a little bit higher that way we can get in there like on this coast again we just touch the brush to the coast and pull the blue away from the coast We'll go back with some white and make some, 
fix some other things. Yeah, we, we do have a tutorial coming out on um, on how these are done. We're going to focus on one of the one of the tutorials. We're going to be focusing on uh, how to do this for relatively free. Again, that's free if you have a 3D printer uh, using just free software. Another thing we're going to touch on is 3D printing services out there like Shapeways and a couple others to help get things done. Now again, this is this is just our base code we're still working on. But a good a good solid base code equals a good solid piece. Probably also. Oh yeah, I got I got some. Let's go ahead and clean that off right there. Just getting rid of the excess excess paint. As much as I can. Let's go ahead and fix that with brown. That's gonna bug. Make sure our canvas is still wet. That way we can control paint. Usually if I'm painting a model or anything like this, I will never use this thick of paint. I have not tried the Warhammer paint yet, the new Warhammer paint, but I really, really want to get a hold of that. Because I think for what I'm doing, it's, it is going to be boom de bah. Back here. Also, if you're there's certain ways you need to prepare a painting for three D printing. Uh, prepare one of your maps for three D printing. Because we found a lot of we found a lot of tips and techniques to see that's getting that's getting halfway decent starting up here. Just have a look there. Yeah. And again, thin coats. This one has some lakes. So we'll probably be putting another coat on. We're not going to rush it. And yes, we are um, incarnate and incarnate and uh, wonder draft are. You have to do it a different way. This map was made in Art Rage, and Art Rage has a export feature that you just, you know, click click a menu thing and it prints out your different black and white channels and then you just take that to any 3d printing software and just go with it and just going over these inner lakes trying to patch up anything I've not seen use all the brush I can it's just at a really good consistency Look up the chat. If you're just joining the channel and haven't been with us before, I'm Dan, this is Avant Novus. I 
called Novices Latin for a new way to tell a story. This is our creative stream where we do stuff like 3D printing and fantasy maps. Probably should lean in the camera more there so you can see it. And again, coast and pull away, coast and pull away, coast and pull away. So we do not want water to come up into our coastline. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if I had a, a blue primer. Yeah. If I if I did this with blue primer, it would be a lot easier and I wouldn't I probably wouldn't even have to do touch up would be a lot easier. Got a nice little fan going there. Hope it's not too hope it's not too loud. Uh, we're going to keep the closed beta local where I live. That way me or Drew or Ian or someone else can attend that to answer any questions and just take notes. And the open beta will be just anywhere. We'll actually do the open beta online as well, just as a, as a live stream. So people can see what it's all about. Yeah, you know, let me close this really quick because there is actually no one in Restream talking about this, so I, I might as well. And let's get this. Make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. center that a little better I got the light coming in about a 45 just so it it helps with the helps with it's really hard if it's flat but with a little bit of light you can actually see what's going on a little bit better back at it something else with this usually you want your model you want your model or whatever you're doing to be extremely dry as you're doing this uh, with 3d printing a little bit wet is good if it's too wet just take a brush like I'm doing right now and just go over it and spread it a little because we are working with th thick washes of paint you can if you have some like a large access of acrylic access a large amount of uh, acrylic paint if you have access to that you can just smother one of these the primary method we're going to be using for this once we get these colors down is actually a dry brush how's that look that's getting there it's getting there on our website, we will be posting the before and afters. Actually, get some good shots of this. Oh, a little, a little light there. And create the tip. Come back in. Let another little river right there. Okay, I'm gonna do a final pass on the coastline. Then on the coastline, we're going to come back with a, like this area here, we're going to come back with a large brush and just pat that area down as much as we can. 
we will be adding white to the highlights and stuff like that so this here is really dark there we go Here, pick up some water and let's, let's go ahead and clean this area up. Again, coasting away. Nope, looks like it missed an entire little, not really little, but a pretty big uh, lake right there, little ocean part of this. I will pull that up. Thank you. I am listening to a Discord channel right now as well. So you'll have to forgive me for if I miss any. If I miss anything. Also, welcome to the stream. I don't know what's that. We're getting a little bit of blue on this, so we'll go tighten that up here in a second. If you guys have any comments? Questions, please for mercies, please let me know. And I'm going to come in with a larger rough brush. Just kind of smooth this out a little bit. Regardless of, this camera is not the best thing on earth, but man, it picks up flaws. There we go. You might have to go back and hit some of that. Yeah, it's starting to look nice. Let's go ahead and wash a brush off. Again, synthetic brushes, I always go with soap. Then a rinse bath. Get uh, some more soap on that. You can see perfectly clean brush now, but soap, rinse, water. That's your. That's going to be your happiness there. Let's go back to our um, Warren Fang Brown. Again, I have a lot of water on the brush. You're now going to get right down into these, into these coastlines where it's kind of off color. Now with coastline, since the map's kind of topographical, we're just going to follow these topographical lines around. And again, if it's hard to see, I do apologize. The second we can order a new camera or get a SLA camera, that will be a happy day for me. Got a lot of paint right there, so we move it around. And again, there's a map for a role playing game. Don't have much details online about that at avantnovus.com. Yeah, I've ain't novus. But the setting is going to be kind of a futuristic steampunk, diesel punk kind of thing. The key to it is a role playing game lets you make your own your own elements, your own spells, and we share the math. Uh, we share the creation math with everybody. That way, you you know, if you want to make custom content, it, it's balanced. That is way too much. Ian, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Intern. I mean, not an intern. Well, technically an intern. Uh, Ian's an intern with us. And he is uh, bribed to come out over and help here with 
copious amount of food and coke, unfortunately, between paychecks right now, so... But he will be rewarded. Uh, probably try to slip in a couple of dollars. The, the cam I usually use, that's a great question. The cam I usually use is, I'm actually using my same uh, face cam. Yeah, we got a big spot paint. Go. Dry. Now, the purpose of this map, and again with any map, each map has a singular purpose, either to tell a story, convey a feeling. Alright, we're in there. We're in there. Couple more little blue spots that we're going to come up. Because the, the sea and these blue spots contrast so vividly. Usually, if I'm painting a model, I wouldn't worry about this base coat as I am. But, gotta nail these. Ian, do you have a question? Okay. Wondering if you can see you can see with this camera. We have a lot of uh, topography lines to show elevation, so we want the players to see exactly where they're at, what they're doing. So our other map, this guy right here, is more of the like an art rage map. Uh, art rage. Well, you can't really see it because of that. Nasty pink glare. Let's see if I can. It's basically this map, but it looks a lot like a looks like your traditional fantasy map. Versus this one's actually a quite a realistic. Uh, as much as you can say, fantasy maps are realistic. That is an odd question. Yes, I do believe in global warming. And even those that don't like it, I, my argument is what's wrong with taking care of the planet? Uh, politics, I kind of... I can tell you my politics... And I don't mean this just to appease, you know, the right and left. I, I am, I'm a moderate. I don't, I don't vote per, I don't vote for the party. I vote for the individual. And honestly, I respect the choices of others on who they vote for. However, if the candidate or the person is not doing the things that I feel are best for the country, I call my representative, because that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, I'm probably not going to talk about gun control, just for the fact that it's a really hot button issue and I'm I really haven't made up I, I first of all I don't think well those mass shootings I don't think should happen of course but how to control that there's I need to do personal research to form an opinion but I do agree something needs to be done But, yeah. A little Discord stream. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it later. Oh, probably not. 
usually I try to leave off. You know, if someone comes into the stream, they're looking for they're looking for what we're doing and not a whole political lecture. So I'm gonna stop that. Alright, we're getting there. Uh yes. We have played with a dual extruder printer. Uh, Andrew actually has one at his house. We're trying to get that up and running. All right, so we're doing pretty good there. Okay, while well, it's still still wet, we're now going to use a shade on this. Okay, uh, we're going to use uh, Drakenhof Blue for the water. And then for the land, we're going to use probably Nern Oil and Karelian, well, Antonian uh, Camo Shade. I'm already shaking these up. The key here is to, again, start in the, this is a shade, we want it all over the place, but we want it smooth. I'm using a smaller brush for control. Since this is a little on the, got a bunch of brushes here, since it's still a little on the wet side, it's going to blend very nice for this, for this particular aspect of the map. It also gets into those really tight little corners. You just go plop. It makes those inner lakes. It just cleans up any little brush strokes or anything like that. The key is you just go slow with the shade. A shade is a specialist paint. Well, it's not really a specialist paint. It's a type of paint that um, it's basically a watered down. Most washes are watered down paint. If you're using like war paints or the or the um, I guess you could call it the P3 paints. Creating a wash is pretty simple. You just water something down. Um, the, the reason I'm using the Citadel paints is that they use a medium and not water. And it seems to it seems to work better for me. If you kind of notice that's helping out. And we will get the other stuff done. Oh yeah, you can use any of the maps we do for Dungeons and Dragons. Heck, we encourage that. I mean, if we if we have some maps online for you, you can just download, for like any of your campaigns. That's what they're there for. Part of this is we like to provide tools for everyone to enhance their experience, either role playing or just you know. Entertainment in general. Alright. It's not doing bad. We have a little bit of uh, inconsistency there, so let's go get the shade in there. Help that. There we go. Oops. It'll help smooth these out. Yeah. Again, if you look at it straight on, let's get that out of the glare. If you look at it straight on, it's really starting to take form. Oh, this is definitely harder than painting the model. Because you're working with a lot of flat pieces and a lot of pieces that um, require... I'm just going to wash this off. We'll come back to this. Um, I'm now going to go with a, a Nern Oil for the top of these areas. And then for the for the sides, I'm going to go with probably uh, a Thonian Camo Shade. Well, let's, let's go with the Nern Oil.
Sorry guys, just have to go through the box and find it. Yes, there we go. Nern oil! Everybody loves Nern oil. Unless you use it too much, then it's funny. I'm going to go with a white flat brush with this, just so that... Let's go ahead and get that wet and prepare the tip. There we go. So we have control when it's looking good. So we're going to start at the mountain areas. We're just going to kind of dry... We, this would be kind of like us dry brushing. But this is going to really pick out all the details. We're going to use a lot of this Nern oil, though. As you can see, it's... I uh, probably can't see. Man, I gotta get another ca camera if I'm doing this again. Staying away from the coastlines because they're still wet with that, that blue shade, but I wonder if you can see. I wonder if you can see the pictures. So this is a topographical map. The, nor the Nern oil is getting into all the little mountain features and everything else like that. Again, with any shade you use, don't be afraid of it. Just, you can always spread it. Might take a picture of this and put it online. Or just bust through this and get to the fun part. Black and oil. And that's going to get in our shadows. We're, we're going to do how we're going to do the highlights on this. It's just a technical dry brush highlight. And that's a lot. I think I used too much green oil there. So let's go ahead and. I can actually use another brush to set that up. I came out crazy. Oh, this is a happy brush. There we go. What's up? Please do. Do you need some more uh, Mountain Dew? I mean, not Mountain Dew, but uh, Dr. Pepper. And we're spraying this on the mountains, not going too close to the seas with this. I wonder if you can see. Oh man, that's really hard to see. It's coming out good. You can see every little ridge, every little valley, every little thing here. And we're going to start on the vegetation. I'm going to leave this area here without Nern Oil because that's going to be my desert area. Oh, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. It's cute. <laughs> um, if I could use some of those Apple products, I would. If I had the money for it, but I definitely like their new, their new, like high end box. Holy crap. I think it's a monster. What terabyte of Ram. Yeah, no, that it wouldn't be, <laughs> you'd be like doing some very high end rendering versus using a server. I lied, I'm, I'm putting the urn oil down here too, because it's really, it's really topography. Um, this one was, I believe, an OBJ file that was printed. And the reason we use that format, or it's kind of a, it's the, kind of the universal format. Or, well, STL's for 3D printing, but OBJ is for looking at models. Most uh, printing software, though, will just import a OBJ and change it into a uh, STL file. STL is a binary file that tells the 3D printer which way you want it to go. Back here. 
Yeah, if you can see right here, let's see if I can angle that. We're starting to get valleys and mountains and other things like that. That's also another reason I'm using this Nern oil, the wash, so I can see if there's plateaus, see if there's other things like that. Let's go ahead and wash this brush off. Now, since I'm working with a shade, I have to make 100% sure there's no, there's no, there we go, that we get abs, that we have absolutely no uh, soap in it. Okay. All right, now we're gonna, oh, I spilled in oil. Ah, everybody oh. always spills in oil. I don't see that much. Here, quick tip. I'm trying to use a wet cloth to. Actually, dry it if you have nerd oil on it. So, let's start the next step. So, happy accident. Put the brush away. We'll have some more paper towels biodegradable. Because I like polar bears and the earth and happiness like that. So, we'll just put this under. This doesn't seem to be a disc. All right, go back. And then we're going to use this uh, the camo shade. Now let's use kind of a want a little bit more control over this. It's going to take us a little more time, but let's go ahead and prep that with water. Let's brush with some water. There we go. Just this up. How much of the stuff left? That's fine. And then we're going to come in. That's not too much. Come in just to the coast areas. This is going to be a lot more difficult. Let's see if I can get in there so you can see. Use this to focus. This is a lot darker. Also, give more definition to the coastal areas. With this, you're really going to have to work when you're getting near the coast. You're really going to have to work to make sure that this stuff doesn't get down in the coast area. With a 3D printing map, actually, it's a little bit easier than your average model because it you have all these ridges to soak up every little thing also another reason we're using the camo shade is that if there's blue it's actually going to turn it into this nice little green okay where i'm working again sorry you can't see most of this we'll we're going to be doing more of these streams with painting you can see right there can't really see it. It's going to be really in the black light. There we go. You can kind of see what's happening there now. It's out of focus, but you can kind of see. Yes, this is watching paint dry. <laughs> Good call. Uh, that is a good question. I'll just sum it up. I, I've said this in a lot of videos before, but I was I started when I was eight. Just you know, kind of drawing and stuff like that. Um, around about when I was. 30, 
I really start start wanting to get into some some way of showing details and they're going in and showing players exactly what was there. So stumbled upon a little pro program called Art Rage. I kind of developed the style of it over the time. I used to if I worked in uh, the I worked in the concert business. So in between shows or during show, boring show, I'd, I'd whip out Art Rage and kind of figure some stuff out. I'm also going to be placing uh, a little bit in these valleys here. You can see I'm placing this, uh, this greenish shade in these like big valleys to kind of give it a little bit more definition. And right here, you can see the difference between the shades. This regression is still doing right there. Also making sure I get anywhere there's not that Nern oil. Usually with the model, I, I don't want to say slather it on, because if you do that, your model's going to look like Dookie. But with this, I'm, I'm definitely slather, slathering it on this map. It's just adding... I need a little bit more texture to stuff. Get that to there. Oh, I didn't clean that off as best I thought I did. Let's see if we can see, but there we go. Let's see what's going on there. Okay. Next step is we're actually going to start on dry brushing. We've got our shades down. And to do this, we're going to go with a, if I have a citadel of this, I do indeed. We're going to go to, with Zandari dust and we're going to st start at the top of the mountains and then come down. We're going to do a couple of passes with this. And again, we're going to be using a dry brush technique. Um, the best place, in my opinion, to learn to paint is I've had, there's a couple. Um, if you're, you know, if you're just beginning, um, Warhammer TV has some amazing tutorials with Duncan. If you really, oops, sorry about that feedback there. Not really feedback, just overing. If you really want to learn how to paint uh, mini wargaming, it's like five bucks for one of their vault memberships. And that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, dry brush, add, bro add just plain, just a little bit of your paint in there. Put it on your mat. Now we're just gonna go back and forth on the very top of these mountains, where mountains are. Just kind of go slow. I'm not going slow. I shouldn't say that. Just take your time with this. If you make any mistakes, you can always come back. Right there, I totally, totally screwed something up. Also, because we're working with red paint, this is actually also going to scrape away a little bit at that brown. The maps we made, we're, we're going to start putting the, make these available to people online. Like, if you're interested in, you know, let's see if I can... Yeah, you can kind of see the top of the mountains there. And we're just going to continually... Just brush this back and forth across where those mountains are. 
reason we do the mountains first, usually that's a highlight, but it's going to give us a good idea on where the rest of this is. And again, with dry brush, the point is not using that much paint. You're just hitting the edges. Now that I've run out of a good deal of paint on this, I'm just starting to press her hard down in these valleys for the typography. Now, if you're doing a, uh, let's see if you can let's see. If you can. Yeah, put it in there. All right. Next thing we're going to do: clean the brush, soap, rinse. See, it's already clean, dry. Go back to a just water. We're going to back in for another pass at dry brushing. Yeah, it's called, it's literally called uh, Zandari dust, Citadel paints. And again, technique, put some paint on it, dab it out, get it up in the bristles, and again, Right now though, I'm going where there's, where I know there's like little juddies off the mountain. I'm just gonna dry brush those in right now, like right there. It's very visible right now, but we are gonna come through with like a darker, a lighter green and slowly pull down the color. Well, this guy right here is like way crazy and we don't want that. Yeah, the music's not too great, but it's, you know, it's YouTube provided it. So they have actually a bunch of pretty good music. That way you don't get flagged for copyright violations. Because a couple weeks ago, we got, a couple times actually, last month and a couple weeks ago, we got nailed with a copyright strike. Well, not really a strike. There's just a cop someone did a copyright claim. And we had a fight that we won, though. We really see the mountains starting to form. I wonder if we can. So, next thing we're going to do, we're going to come in. We're going to start at the bottom with a very deep, dark green and pull it up into this. Hey, I got a driver ready to install. Bad windows. So we're actually going to use this. Uh, gnarled green from uh, the, I guess it's the, they did the uh, war machine. They put out this style, Pathfinder, I believe. And again, for this, I, this stuff's actually really kind of watered down. So you can see I have to really try to dry brush out. We're actually going to start right next to the coast. And just pull this color up into the valleys. If you're not seeing the chat, that's because I have like four chat things open. We're broadcasting on a ton of different channels. Again, I'm just highlighting the valleys. We'll come in and we'll really, well, I'm technically dry brushing, but it's a very wet dry brush. I'm kind of staying away from the ocean area because we're, we're going to need to come in with a more specialized, more skinny brush that we have a lot more control over. This is going to be, this is down here is going to be a little bit of a desert, so we're not going to, do much, just paint the hills and valleys like that. So you can see that now. It's getting there. There we go. 
couple more and then we'll get on with this. Uh, you can use pretty much, uh, Windows has programs you can use to view OBJ files, manipulate them. So even if you don't have 3D printers, if you grab one of our 3D maps, you can create, you know, you can make it, you can like zoom into just this little, por just a portion like that and actually physically manipulate it. That way, if you're a game master or narrator or whatever you, whatever part of your plane, it gives you a really cool view. Another another reason we're doing like this, it's kind of a formula. It's it's if I was a wizard or you know a seer or whatever, um, I would draw what I see, and if I had magic or scrying or anything like that. I would, this is the kind of thing I'd see all the time. So this is the kind of thing I would draw or make maps of more realistically. I mean, you get 30, you get a couple of miles in the air and you're good to go. And usually scrying spells or spells that you look at stuff are, are a lot better. This does kind of look like a hot mess right now. But again, we're just adding, we're trying to develop the terrain and where certain colors are. So don't worry about that. It's a process. We were thinking like taking one of these over to, um, we have Blue Table Games where I'm at. So they're actually their, their head, they're where they, they're based out of uh, Salt Lake City. And I'm just you know, really close to Salt Lake City. And American Fork, and American Fork too. And I'm. There we go. There we go. Let's put that up. See, we're gonna we're getting there. Um, so this we kind of got a really rough undercoat and a dry brush. I'm kind of doing things backwards, but it's allowing me to have again a lot more control over where I am and what I'm doing. And now I'm going to start on the crazy little stupid details. And we're going to go back to, we're going to start with this green. We don't need much. If it was, if it was, if this was one of the uh, Citadel paints, I'd, you know, use that. But you can see how, you can see how wet it is. I'm starting on the coastal regions. There's more of a wash than anything else going on right now. Just being very careful. And I'm following the topography that I laid down with the green and the, the different shades. I'm using those as my guide. Let's see if we can get some. I really want to start. There we go. If this goes over into the blue, don't worry about that too much. Because we'll actually have to go back in the blue and touch it up. And when I'm blending, I take the color down from the mountains. I'm going to put another shade of green on here near the mountains. So if your brush starts to dry out, move it up into the mountainous areas. Yeah, it's 1240. We're gonna, in about, I don't know, about 45 minutes, we're, we're gonna take a break. And we're gonna come back to this. I needed a break from writing. Um, I did like 1,700 words yesterday, and I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of typing. There we go. 
And again, the 3D printed model is going to just grab paint and devour it. Up here. I'd actually either use a blue or green primer and just kind of put it on like a bunch of different coats. That also helped with the... I didn't do it with this because this map specifically has all these topographical features. And I really want to keep, keep that. It's getting, it's getting there. It's a getting there. Hey, Max. I didn't see you there. Sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm on Discord right now with some guys. It's our community. Just chatting with them. If you want to join that, that's on Facebook. Just putting that. Pretty solid coat down. But again, moving it up into the mountains. Because our next coat's gonna be a brighter, it's gonna be a brighter green to start on the midland areas. Walk that walk that in the walk that up and then down to the coast for blending. For blending purposes. I just like this color green. It was one I had access to, and it's not really, I mean, you can use pretty much anything you want, but this has worked for me well in the past. There we go. Whoop. Whoop. Uh, we're getting there. We are getting there. Just kind of, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, this area we need to define a little bit better. But we'll get to that. A little brown at the high high points is really quite okay. I just kind of like that. The hard part is the, right where the coast is. I have to be very careful with this. So a pretty good job on the blue. We don't want to spoil that. I'm using, you're right, I'm using a lot of paint. If I was doing like a Warhammer model, I would never use this much paint. But because this is a 3D printer, it devours yield paint. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you can start seeing the actual mountains and everything else. You just need to fix this side. Got some green to it. Start at the. Got some cool hills over here that we we'd want to wanna highlight. The more I look at this, more I think I might even just dry brush the lighter green up onto this. I think that's going to give me a lot better effect. Okay, way too much paint there. We'll, we'll just assume that's a uh, rain shadow. Plan accordingly.
Once we're done with the little nitty gritty here, we'll go ahead and dry brush the screen a little bit more. Just to blend it. And we're getting there, see? See all the mountains, valleys. I wish ah, I wish this would be in focus. I'm sure get a diffuse, some diffusion on this light. It's actually pretty diffused. A little dab 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 in there. Dabbing. Get this out on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, and our website to show details. Again, I hit the coast very carefully, then I pull the color up. Up by the desert. I'm going to be very careful of the desert. Hey, Ian, come here. What do you think, man? Right. So we're getting there. We are getting there. Go ahead and we're almost done with this and then we will dry brush this a little bit. I'm not saying we don't need to, but it'll help. It still help quite a bit on blending. There we go. There. Let's see if there's, yeah, I missed up here that I really want. Well, that's it. We'll uh, dry brush this area with some white. Unfortunately, the only white I have is, where is it? Oh, uh, yeah. The joy of uh, uh, ceramite white. One problem with ceramite white, it is notoriously clumpy. Really don't like using it. There we go. Those valleys up here. Those big old alpine valleys. And again, I'm just controlling where the paint is. Down by the uh, desert area, we're going to do that just a little bit, nothing too much. Pull it up. Pull it up. I'm just going to come in with my finger and bite the edges off there. This area, same thing. You'll have to wait for the video, actually. <laughs> no, uh, we use, there's some free, some really cool free software out there. That if you get a white and, white and black channel, a well, white black image, it's really easy to create one of these. The hard part's actually drawing the map in the first place. Let's leave for little areas to fix. Little problem areas like this guy right here. And 
and pulling the the greenery up into the mountains. There we go. Should we get these into the valleys? Again, really thick. Hard part of this is you're turning it, you have to turn this every so often. I think that's the biggest tip I can give. Turn your map, work on it, then work on another side, and follow the topography around it. Yeah, I'll download the I'll download this YouTube video and then do a speed a speed one through it so no one has to look at this and you know no one's spending two, three hours watching this video. Or they really want to. Hey, that's even better. That's why we live stream. A little blending here. Almost using this as a dry brush now. So if I really want to get into these valleys. All right, let's go back to our dry brush. It's a really scratchy brush, that's fine. We're just pulling this everywhere now, just to kind of blend it in. You guys are actually seeing it's coming along really nicely. It's gonna take the, take some more time. Right now, it we'll work on this till the top of the hour. We got about seven minutes. And then we are going to probably wrap up this. And yes, I'm scared of doing this coast. I don't like to do the coast at all. But it is probably the most important feature of a 3D map. So we're going to take our time with it. We're going to have fun with it. The forest, I'm actually not going to paint. I'm actually going to add a little glue and some trees, little mossy trees everywhere. So that's fun. It gives it more of a, it kind of helps with that 3D look as well. I totally missed this entire area right here. Bad damn. There we go. I feel bad. A little bit here, a little bit there. Yes, I am smiling. I, I am I'm really enjoying this. Right there. So you always turn it. <laughs> yeah, the music is off. It went through the it went through the playlist. Oh, I'm sorry, it's annoying.
Also, this dark green blends with the, the blue. So if you're seeing this, it's good angle right there. You can see all the mountains. So the shadow. 45 degrees. So yeah, we're getting there. We is getting there. We got another three minutes and then we'll, we'll call it for today. Clean up this brush. Beat the devil out of it. Oh, Bob Ross, you are so wonderful. Even though every art teacher in existence hates you. I don't know about that. All right. Okay, we're going to take a slightly... I'm going to use new green on this just to lighten certain parts. This is a... This is... Arson green again from P3. We're just going to dry brush this on the higher parts. Let me shake that up a little, a little bit better. Oh, that ain't good. And again, it's really subtle, but we'll really start pulling out some details here. Don't want, we don't want to use too much. Like, you can see the difference right, right in here. Man, I need a different camera. I don't know if I'm actually going to publish this video because you can't see what I'm doing. I'm dry brushing and dabbing on here. Yeah, dabbing. A little better than planking. I'm kind of focusing on the parts by these mountains. This lighter color actually blends really good into that. Two minutes and we will get done. Right. It's getting there. Now I'm dry brushing everything because I'm going to come in with that Zendari dust. Sandalari dust, and we're going to pick out those, these mountains again with that. Yeah, it's going, it's going well. Right, we're going to wash this brush off. Now this, this dry brush we're going to use is, we're going to really be careful on this. This one's being a poo. We really got a lot of paint into this one. See? Yeah. Not a problem. Put in more soap. Put it in our rinse. Wipe it off. Okay, there we go. There we go. And then we're going to use our Zandari dust. And we are only going to use just the littlest bit. And we're going to make sure that's a really, really dry brush. And then on these put on where the mountains are, we're just going to pull this color up. Now, because we have a little bit of green on there that's still wet, we kind of want that because it's giving us a good 
nice blooded transition. Where that's a happy accident, but also in a way that's exactly what we want this to be. I'm usually not this hesitant with a dry brush, but ooh, yeah, that ain't good. And we're using this as a highlight. It's also helping us blend stuff a little bit better. Technically, this is a base, which is good and bad. Again, really hesitant, really slow. Take your time. Focus on the mountains. Start at, you don't really start at the sea. You can if you want, if you're really steep mountains or really steep terrain. For the next steps, though, we, we do want this dry, so I will be taking a break. Just gonna go over this these high peaks just one more time here. Get a middle map. Just highlighting the top of these peaks. You know, because we're because this is really Oh, you can see what it's doing. I'm going to come back with even more of this. We're not going to do as dry. Probably good enough. We're just going to run it on the top of these, on the top of the peaks. We're going to stay away from the lower areas. We're not going to blend this. We will be adding the white for the snow a little bit later. To do that, we want this completely dry. Oh man, I've really neglected that desert. That's okay. Let's go here into this desert a little bit better. Show you that. Let's see if we can get a, a good image. Getting there. Just again, slow and steady with your washes. We're going to start running this color across the little spines of the mountains to, and I'm just focusing on those right now so we can really get that Zendari dust into those. So it actually looks like a mountain range. So this is, I don't know if there's a definite, definite term for this kind of dry brush. This is a, it's a wet dry brush. So you're getting, let's see if you can see that. So you know, like this kind of, so you're starting to see it down here, which is what we want. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And again, it's, it's when you're painting this, it's just kind of going back and forth. 
3D printed models are, it takes some time because they're pretty much different from, oh, I have too much on there. Yeah, I did it anyways. From your like average miniatures. It's just the amount of texture on here. Okay, let's get this guy. Grab this too. Got kind of some red rocks. Yeah, see, so we're getting it. It is definitely getting done. Yay! Cool. Let's go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna touch up some places with the uh, sodium green. To do that, we're just gonna place and then just use our fingers to smooth it out. Thing. If you can see it, I'm just also running this up uh, up the middle of stuff. There we go. All right, got some more stuff to do on this. We'll get to it, we'll go slow. And uh, right now it's all about details. So it is now 107. Regardless, you won't be able to actually see the details on this with the crappy camera. But we'll get in there. You can see the mountains and this is rough, but we'll, we'll get in there and make this look good. Because, yeah. All right. This has been Dan with Avid Novus. I'm going to, well, I'm not, I'm going to still work on this today. I'll put it before and after on YouTube. And we'll just go from there. Thanks so much for tuning in. And have a great day.